All right, we got more on the uh, WWE and AW business notes from the other day. Okay, so you know it's interesting because um, you know I was running through a lot of stuff, and I mean one of the things that hit me was like if you know AW. I mean it's funny because so many people are in denial about this, but. AEW, you know, and it's almost like, I mean, I, and I know people have done the thing about goalpost moving and all that. And um, if you had told me in, let's see, they started in early 2019. And if you had told me that in mid-2022 that they would be doing, they would be doing in a, in a one-month period, they would do two pay-per-views over 127,000 buys. They would do two shows over a million dollar gate, and they would do two other shows over over um, 11,200 paid. I would say, holy crap, that like a startup, and like like there were people when they started who thought, yeah, you know, they'll go in there and. Um, you know, for the first couple of months, they'll do they'll do pretty well as a novelty because some of these guys have names. But then, you know, they'll they'll run out of matches. You know what I mean? Like Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. You know, after their third meeting, which by the way, they've still only had one meeting in that company. I mean, there'll be nothing left, and they'll have no main eventers and and all that. And it's it's kind of amazing. Um, when you really look at the level of success that that company has had, um, because it had the staying power. I mean, I've seen so many companies, you know, will go in there and, and, you know, even have a hot streak. And granted, this hot streak is not like if you're going to compare it to like, say, WCW. Um, I mean, they're nowhere near as, as culturally significant as WCW was. But WCW also was a company that, you know, came from Jim Crockett Promotions, started in 1935. The hot streak was what, um, when did they really get to where they could draw? It was probably 97, I'm going to say. 96, probably maybe 96. And then by uh, 99, they, they still drew in, in early 99. But after, you know, the early part of 99, they were pretty much in the toilet. So they had a couple of good years. Um, but this, you know, this these this company started from scratch. You know, TNA never had anything close to this. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different... It's It's interesting to me because... You know, different people will have different uh, thoughts on it. Um, so many people thought that there was no way that they were going to be successful. Um, no, you know, um, you know, many thought they were going to be they were going to be out of business. Almost everybody thought that in the long run, Vince's NXT would beat them because it's Vince and Vince can't be beaten and everything like that. And um, you know, obviously, um, in the first couple of months, there were periods where it looked like that was the case, where they started off really strong. They had a bunch of really sellouts, and then, you know, things came down, and, and it was harder to sell tickets, and they, you know, um, television ratings were, were dropping in that first couple of months. And then, you know, uh, they got the new contract, and... They turned things around business-wise, and then they survived the pandemic, came back strong, uh, produced one great pay-per-view show after another with business constantly going up, 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 you know, um, and somehow, I mean, you know, people are in denial. I mean, it's like there are people still in denial of the success. I don't know how. Um, I, it boggles my mind, actually, but it doesn't in, in other ways because it's, it's really... Um, we live in a really unique world right now, and that is, uh, you know, you can see it in, in the news. It's like facts no longer matter. Um, it's you pick sides, and once you pick your sides, you never change. And it's kind of it's kind of a really, you know, and and that was what happened here. A whole lot of people thought that this thing was going to fail, um, that the wrestlers weren't good in some cases, but uh, that it was going to fail. And it didn't fail, and so now they have to come up with reasons why it's failing. Um, in in other ways, um, 
it's 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 also interesting because I know people who, um, you know, as far as like the success, you know, like like what what was pro wrestling when we were, you know, what was the idea of pro wrestling? It was to get crowds excited, to sell tickets, to get people to buy pay per views, to get people to watch television, to you know all of these things, right? And what what is what? you know, constitutes, you know, like a good match. As a general rule, you know, if you're putting on good shows, you get a lot of crowd reaction. In this case, like we would we would watch these shows, these TV shows, and they would have great crowd reaction up and down. So it's like, well, I guess they know how to work. But no, 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 no. These guys, this style doesn't work. It, it doesn't work to the mainstream. Yet it does, you know. I mean, and you will see it with, I mean, whether, whoever it is, take your pick, right? Um of these guys that could never work on television they could never they could only be stars in like little buildings and all of a sudden you're in buildings in front of 15,000 people and these people are going crazy for them and it's like it doesn't count oh it you know like it's it's in the sense of those crowd reactions are because the crowd is too easy it's too easy to get over before this crowd so it doesn't count they're really not good workers and it's been three years of that so it's kind of an interesting uh, thing you know when I look back because um, if you look in in the new issue of the observer there's going to be a lot of the the live attendance stats and uh, it's pretty mind blowing as far as like the last two months because they um, you know their their numbers compared to WWE numbers is uh, no is really amazing when you think about it um, now, going forward, obviously, WWE's got some really strong advances. AEW, um, you know, their next two months are not going to be anywhere close to what these last two months are. Nothing nothing close. Um, and they don't really have any big shows planned until, uh, obviously, all out September 3rd. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, Ring of Honor sh show at Paul Songus does. The tickets go on sale Friday. But... Um, you know WWE, as I mentioned the other day, they're um, they they have some very strong advances. Their their next two months are just going to be so much bigger than their last two months. So um, there is an upswing coming, and it's um, and AEW is you know hurting to a degree because so many of the key guys are out right now, um, and I think that you know we'll see if if when. Punk comes back. Whatever happens with MJF, Danielson. Um, well, I'm very concerned with Danielson, obviously, because you know when uh, when you have when when you have it, the number of concussions he's had, and he's been out now for. I mean, we're about five weeks in, right? And um, you start worrying that uh, at five weeks of a concussion, it, it, this may be a real bad situation. I know in real life. And everything like that, he's fine. He can function. He can do everything. But, I mean, as far as, like, being cleared to wrestle, I don't know anything. Um, no one knows. No one knows. It's like, you know, is it going to be, you know, like, like again, getting cleared from a concussion can can be any time. There's no time frame. It, it either hat. But the fact that it's been this long is um, very concerning. Um so, but anyway, and, and, you know, Adam Cole's going to be out for a while. Punk probably, I don't know when the time frame is, and I think that they are trying not to let you know, but I'm pretty sure he'll be back. Um, you know, bro, you know, surgery for a broken foot. It's, it's a couple of months, but it's not like it's six months, you know. Um, so he probably won't be that long. MJF, I have no idea what's going on with him, obviously. We're very, very interesting thing, but it'll be interesting to see when, uh, if when you know especially punk and danielson um can come back and omega's the other one too the other wild card when he comes back that'll be a big deal too when those guys come back um you know will they be able to bounce back um it's i think one thing that's going to be very interesting obviously and we'll know this one in uh about two and a half weeks is the is how the the Grand Slam show at Arthur Ashe Stadium does, and and again also when tickets go on sale for All Out, if it is in Chicago, which most people figure that it's going to be, um, do they 
you know, do the instant sell like they've done for pay-per-views in Chicago up to this point because you're coming back so quick from the Forbidden Door show. So this, you know, that's some of the stuff going on. But, uh, you know, as far as WWE goes, there is an upswing coming. And uh, the Raw rating on Monday um, was shockingly high other than Hour 3. Um, that was a really unique... I mean... I, I've, I've seen people totally misevaluate this, and they go, "Oh my God, it's it's a you know so far down from last week." And it's like, "Duh, it was July." You put a show on July fourth. The number of people who are out on July the fourth, there is no way that that show should not have set the all-time low record rating. It's not Memorial Day. There's a big difference between Memorial Day or Labor Day, or I mean, the worst nights. For television, the worst nights for wrestling historically, uh, for t on television, would be July Fourth, which is by far the worst. And and if there's a show, and Christmas Eve, those are the two ones where where you're gonna do really bad. And um, they did two really good hours, and they collapsed in hour three. Which I'm not exactly. Um, the last time they were on July Fourth, all three hours did the same. So it was like the people who, and it was. At that point, and granted, it's a lot more viewers than, than now, but the last time they were on July 4th, they did set the all-time low record, you know, for the um, for modern times on the USA Network. And this one actually beat last year's show, which was on July the 5th as far as total viewers. It was a little down in 18 to 49 um, and uh, a little up in 18 to 34. But, um, I mean, this, this show... Um, those first two hours were, were absolutely stunning how, how big they did. Um, and the third hour, you know, as far as why they dropped so much, the second and third hour was the biggest um, second and third hour drop in the history of Raw. So something, uh, you know, they were already home watching the show, and then they tuned out. So the one thing was, and like I said, the last time that there was a three-hour Raw, all three hours did the same, because what it was is, the people who want to watch wrestling um, are going to watch wrestling. Um, but what made them tune out, and I don't know, I, I'm waiting to get the quarters to find out when they tuned out and what it was. I know some people speculated, oh, they, they came home to watch, and then the fireworks started, and then they tuned out. But fireworks usually start at 9, and the second hour actually was the highest in the 18 to 49 demo and did almost the same number of viewers as the first hour. So it wouldn't be that. But there was something, whether they, you know, whatever it was, whether it was the, you know, I, I you know, I mean, Otis Barfing probably wasn't the greatest thing to do, but I don't know that that would be the reason. Obviously, you know, Becky Lynch and Asuka, probably they went to the well one time too many with that. I mean, for sure they did, you know, because if that was, if they didn't, they wouldn't drop that much. Um, so that's part of it as well. But, uh, um, you know, as far as that aspect goes, the, uh, you know, again, those first two hours were, were, were sh like they're not high for like a normal week. This like, it's not a normal day. It cannot be evaluated the same way. Um, and aside from the uh, the Macy's fireworks thing, you know, it pretty much beat everything on network, uh, killed everything on cable. I mean, it was a it was a great number. You know, it re I mean, it, it, even though it's like one of the lower ones ever, you can't look at it and go, oh, you know, point three seven. That's much lower than point five four. It's like, yeah, it's July fourth. Completely different. Um, completely different. But uh, so that was the story there as far as the ratings go. Um, wrestling's doing pretty darn well this last week. Um, in the top ratings um, for the entire week, uh, let me get to it. Um, uh, where was it? Um, the... For the week, um, you know, Raw was number one on cable for the week. That's not this week's Raw. It may, it probably won't be this week, um, just because of again being on July fourth. If it, if they're number one for the week, being on July the fourth, um, that's almost like mind blowing. Mind blowing because that's that's you know the 
you know, a really bad night for television viewing. But but Raw with Cena was number one. Um, and, um, hold on, what was it? Um, there was a, a Formula One race um, that was number two. Dynamite was number three. And the UFC prelims were number four. Five. There was a CNN news show that was number four. And, um, you know, the UFC prelims, that's just on ESPN, not the... It was split. The audience was split between um, ABC, ESPN, and ESPN+. Plus. So to finish fifth when you split the audience three ways is is, is actually very, very impressive. Um, they end up with uh, 1.8 million viewers between... Um, on television and probably a couple, you know, probably who knows how many on, on ESPN plus, but it's probably a couple hundred thousand. Um, and, um, what was interesting there was the, the ESPN, they're running ESPN and ABC at the same time. And they, they actually were on ESPN from six to eight already. Um, and then at, from eight to 10, they were simulcast. And what happened was, I think that the the normal uh, UFC audience, you know, a lot of whom were already watching on ESPN, just continued to watch on ESPN. And there was, you know, a lot more watched the 8 to 10 than the 6 to 8. So I think that, like, the usual, most of the usual fans probably watched either on ESPN Plus, like, they, like uh, many would do because... It's pay per view, and you stay on ESPN Plus, or you watch on ESPN. But I think the ABC was kind of like because when I look at like the people who watch on e ABC, it was a network audience, it was a much older audience. I think that that was more of people who normally would not watch the show. Um, it did not do um, big numbers on ABC. You know, it was a point one nine. A um, little over 900,000 viewers, which for a network, you know, in prime time is a not good number. But they were not looking at necessarily doing a great number because the reason that they did the simulcast was the idea that um, the more people who watch the prelims, the more people who may buy the pay-per-view. You know, that's it was an experiment to see if um, you got a whole bunch of people normally you know would not be watching a ufc show um but if it's on abc maybe they'll stick and watch and and there were people who did can you get them um with these big prelim numbers to then will that um you know lead to more people buying the pay-per-view and one of those things is because it's on espn plus pay-per-view we will probably never know the answer i guess what we will know is if they start doing this, um, you know, the next couple of months, you know, I mean, I don't think they'll do it during the early part of the TV season, but if they start doing this again, that will tell you that it worked. And if they never do it again, that will probably tell you that uh, they evaluated and it didn't work. But this was this was an experiment to do that. So um, um, and the the ESPN show was actually uh, the youngest audience young sports audience of the week and uh just a very um a lot of people watching together things like that they um the espn number was 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 uh you know it was less than dynamite and it was lower than dynamite in um in uh 1849 but it was a uh very young very good number um overall so um that was the the deal there but um yeah very very strong week right now and probably will be uh through probably the start of football season uh once football starts obviously you know pro and college football will start dominating everything again but until then uh, wrestling may be uh uh raw for sure you know raw for sure is going to be probably you know up near the top every week and um dynamite you know, for the has has been in the top ten the last three weeks, so I would say that there's a good shot that Dynamite will at least remain top ten, and maybe you know this week was three. If they have a big sh if they have a big show, you know they could probably 
get as high as two, perhaps. I don't think they'll ever get number one, um, but uh, they could get as high as number two for the week. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.